Alright team, so we're back, course, talking FF7, we're here to talk about Remake Part 3, as always with the channel. Anything in regards to Part 3, we're going to talk about it, of course. This comes from Toriyama and uh, Taruki Indo also being at Inokan, which I never heard of, because it's in Indonesia, looking into it. It's Indonesia Anime Convention. There's an account on Twitter, Windermeyer, they posted several videos from the panel. They did say on their pinned tweet that they didn't get to record the entire panel because of a lack of memory on their phone. But we got some interesting bits from Toriyama in regards to Part 3. One of the things in regards to Part 3 is just about wanting players to be able to explore the world more freely, which is something we've heard, I think, from like Kamiguchi and probably other devs. It's cool. That's what we want. We're excited for that, but it's to be expected because we're going to have the full scope of the world in the third game. But also the high wind and the submarine and whatever else they might allow us to use to f explore the world. So, like, being able to explore the world more freely, it's exciting, but we've heard it before. But this part right here where they're asked about Rufus's combat style and whether or not their positions will change going into the third game, they say, Rufus's combat style with guns and coins was made because having Rufus only use gun made it difficult to come up with the combo variations itself. Toriyama and Endo's roles remain the same for the third game, but Toriyama is ready to pass his position once it's over. So Toriyama wanting to like maybe step down from like that high of a position for a game, I think we've heard this before from like a Tase or something. I think it makes a bit of sense. They're not like old dudes. They're only in their 50s. But I mean, it's probably still like, very taxing to be like a director of a video game. So as I said, though, it's not really a surprise that their positions aren't changing into the third game. We know it's going to be like the same dev team. I guess directors can change because we've seen that happen with, you know, between Remake and Rebirth, obviously. Uh, Namora stepped down a little bit. Uh, but Indo being like bow director still, obviously. Like, I mean, he's the one that like fixed the Remake combat style with Remake and then improved upon it into Rebirth. And of course, he's still going to be there for the third game. Probably the most interesting bit, at least from the videos that we have, is Toriyama talking about the ending of Part 3, where he says that they're going to resolve all the questions that we have from the ending of Rebirth, obviously, and then trying to surpass the original game's ending. For this, we're just going to use Genki translation. FF7 Rebirth co-director Motomo Toriyama says Part 3's ending will be even more moving than the original. I want to promise that we will resolve all the mysteries that were opened up in the ending of Rebirth and deliver an even more moving ending than the original. As for them answering the questions we have from the ending of Rebirth, I would sure fucking hope so. It'd be kind of weird for the last part of the trilogy to not answer all the questions unless they plan on doing more with this shit. Like if they have something else planned after the remake project to continue the story, I would hope that the last game would resolve all the questions. I don't necessarily want to jump down a rabbit hole talking about the ending of Rebirth in this particular video, but I don't feel like there's that many mysteries. It's definitely not like Remake, right? Like, we talked about Remake's ending for literally, like, four fucking years, dude. Like, leading up to Rebirth, right? Like, we were talking about that forever. There's not really that kind of mystery. You don't see that a ton of, like, theory discussions based on the ending of Rebirth, because I don't feel like there's that many things that aren't understandable. I'm not saying that I have all the answers, because I certainly don't. I'm not even saying that we as the community have all the answers, but it's just, like, we're not having the similar discussions we had post-remake, right? Like, it's not the same feeling necessarily post-rebirth. There's definitely some stuff I don't quite understand that I want answers to, so there's definitely some, you know, we're looking forward to Part 3 to answer those questions, but just overall, it's just not like the same theory craft and shit we had that was really fun after Remake came out. For trying to surpass the original game's ending or make it more moving, I guess, as he says, I mean, that's not really that hard. FF7's ending is iconic in its own way, but it's a pretty abrupt ending. Like, once, like, you know the live stream comes out to help Holy Stop Meteor, the game fucking ends. It just ends kind of abruptly, like, with no answers or anything, and then obviously it cuts to, you know, 500 years in the future or whatever with Red 13 and his kids. That's kind of it. It's, it's iconic for what it is, because it's FF7, but I don't think, if you're trying to give, like, a more emotional ending, a more moving ending, you can definitely easily surpass that. <laughs> Something I haven't really thought about, you know, when we talk about, like, Part 3 and the remake project is how the third game is going to end because that one ended it so abruptly. I imagine we're probably going to see the actual aftermath this time. If it ends the same, right? You know, Meteor, Holy, Livestream coming out, all that other shit. We don't get to see what happens after that. And then, obviously, it skips forward to, like, Avan Children or Cerberus type shit or whatever. So, it'll be kind of interesting to see what we're shown after Meteor is stopped or whatever. Like, that'd be kind of cool to see what all happened kind of in between those games and that movie, that game, that movie, and then the ending of FF7 that we never got to see before. We also have stuff that's, like, post-FF7 with, like, On the Way to Smile, where we learned some stuff, but, I mean, getting to actually see it is going to be pretty fucking cool. And if, indeed, you know, the remake project is pre-Advent Children, they probably, like, sow the seeds for things to take place later in the compilation, like, you know, the building the Town of Edge and, like, Geostigma. We probably we might see, like, Sephiroth in the live stream or Genova in the live stream, something along those lines, whatever. Regardless, the ending's going to be emotional just because it's the end of the remake project. We're saying goodbye to these characters for who knows how long. I mean, there's probably going to be more FF7 stuff eventually. Maybe more to the compilation or whatever they want to do. I don't know exactly. They're not just going to give up on Final Fantasy VII because it's like, you know, it makes them money or whatever. But if you've been following the remake project from the beginning, it'll be more than a decade, right? More than 10 years of our life 
you know, following along the remake project. So whenever the third game actually comes out, it's going to be kind of bittersweet, man. They'd almost have to, like, go out of their way to make it a bad ending. Like, they'd have to, like, just co completely royally fuck up somehow, some way to make it, like, a bad ending or worse than the original. Pretty much the video, though, I did see through some of, like, her tweet exchanges on Twitter, Wintermeyer, that I think the, there's another panel tomorrow for Inacon that Toriyama's going to be there in Turkey Indo. Maybe we'll have more information somehow. It depends on what they talk about tomorrow, if there's more Q&A stuff, if they talk about Part 3. We'll be there, of course. Anyways, this video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Social networks in the description below. Follow me on Twitter. Dash YT. That's it. Bye. Used to care what people thought. But now I care more. I and mean, nobody out here has got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending. Depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like Coltrane, we in here. Like Rogaine, or leave it. Like Cobain.